All right, Job chapter 30, let's call this one, but now, because in contrast to the last chapter where Job described what it was like in his prime, he's going to say, but now they laugh at me as he's going to describe men who were unfit to keep his dogs in his prime, uh, how they now laugh at him. Not only that, he describes them as men who get by on meager rations, who are outcast themselves, dwelling in places not all that different from what you would expect out of the beasts of the field, ultimately describing them as a nameless and senseless group who now make Job their song, meaning they encourage themselves or seem to encourage themselves by making songs about Job's misfortune. More importantly, beyond passively finding joy in his situation, he's going to say they break up his path and promote his calamity. He's going to go on to say, even one in a pile of ruins, however, looks up and makes a cry for help as we are going to see once again as we have talked about those things that seem to resurface in Job's character no matter how beaten down he seems by his circumstance seem to be among other things his integrity and his desire to appeal to God even though he feels like God is his enemy and so when he says even when buried under ruins still reaches up for help he is helping us to see how, like a buoy, once again, no matter how many times it is cast under sea, it still comes back to the surface, giving us an indication of just how much Job hopes in God. Nevertheless, he still cannot help but notice the irony that, as he mentioned in the last chapter, all of the things he did to comfort people when he was in his strength and abundance are now lost on him as he seems to be able to find no one to comfort him, but many who seem to be willing to find joy in his misfortune. As he goes on to describe the way in which his skin seems to rot and fall from him as his songs, once songs possibly of joy, have now turned to songs of mourning and weeping. And out of this chapter, the thing that seemed to stand out to me the most was, as we mentioned, the way in which those who were outcast themselves, struggling to get by on their own, were eager to not only see Job in his misfortune, but to do things, as the chapter is going to describe, to actually help keep him there when it says, in verse 13, as we mentioned, they break up my path and they promote my calamity, reminding me of how dangerous it can be when we get emotionally invested in the misfortune of others, understanding that we all come up on hard times and those can be the times as much as any where we can be tempted to find our self-esteem in looking down on others less fortunate and who better to look down on than someone who we once had to revere, even if that person was the very one who was willing to help us out in our time of need, bringing to mind the old adage, hurt people hurt people something we discussed a little bit in our Wednesday night class where we talked about the ways in which we can become vulnerable to lashing out or actually providing impediments to others' progress when we are ourselves emotionally wounded. Like we said, not simply finding joy in the misfortune of others, but becoming so emotionally attached to seeing them in an inferior position that we will actually do things to help keep them there, at which point we may be dangerously close to taking on the role of adversary, understanding that to the degree we stand in the way of progress, especially God-ordained progress, that we are now falling into the role of the Bible's adversary, the one otherwise known as the devil, the one who has taken on the role of opposing God-ordained progress. So in this chapter that is progressing towards God, restoring Job to his fortunes, Job is describing for us those who not only find joy in his misfortune, but again, have actively taken on the role of opposing his progress or his recovery. So my prayer for you is my prayer for me. To the degree that we find ourselves hurting God willing, we will overcome not only the temptation, but the degree to which we have already begun to indulge our desire to become the adversary of God-ordained progress.